Hello everyone and welcome back. So let's continue with our typewriter here. Uh, if we go back to our reference, we've uh, checked off one, two, three, four, which means we are now on to uh, step five here. This of course is the sheet of everything we have left to do before we were done this phase. Um, I included these two little images as part of the backing. Uh, this little spring attachment um, connects to something on the back. So I just wanted to make sure I don't lose sight of that as we I'm also going to be seeing things from this view. Um, but what are we doing in this part? We are going to be making this attachment here, um, the legs. Um, revisiting this piece, we'll probably have time to do these guys and hopefully this bottom part as well. So hopefully from five to nine. Uh, the only thing on this list that seems like it's going to take a while is six. And uh, even then, it's not really the most complicated piece. So. We'll see how long this uh, this all goes. Um, one thing to mention though, is that uh, between this part and the last part, I actually went through and separated these guys. Uh, if you remember before, I uh, remember before, sorry, that we sort of welded all this together. So what I did was I, I just sort of detached this and made it its own piece and then filled in the holes here. Uh, and I did this on both sides. And I did this because looking at the reference images, um, it's not super clear that it's sort of welded onto the bottom. Like some other reference images show it pretty snug and pretty close to it, but I didn't really like the idea of that because um, as I mentioned before, it doesn't seem like something, like, like this all seems like one big bulky frame, you know what I mean, that everything slots into. This is a little bit too thin, a little bit too dainty to be part of that. So I, I decided to keep it separate. Um, the lit, like the only difference that we're going to see is rather than having these two blend between each other, there'll be a, a line when we sort of soften things out, which is very minimal, but to me, it makes more sense mechanically. Uh, so I'm going to be keeping it that way. Uh, regardless, where are we starting in this part? We are going to be starting at the feet. We have a little bit of cleanup to do because, um, this original model, uh, let me turn this back on. This original model here, when we were first blocking things out, we were sort of going about it with a lot less detail. I seem to have underestimated uh, the amount of parts and the amount of time that this whole project was going to take. Uh, and in doing so, parts like the feet and some of the very um, simple components were overlooked. This being a prime example, like we should have just made these the proper screws. And we will revisit that once we go to the high poly. Um, it's, a, it's a small detail that isn't going to take very long. Uh, but the feet were one of these things. So what we're going to have to do is, first of all, yeah, of course, we're going to be adding a screw into there. Um, but additionally, if we look at some of the feet, um, I like the idea of them being separate pieces, kind of detached, and they have this like material separation, a nice little groove. Um, and in order to do that, what I'm going to do is actually separate the mesh into a different um, component. Like they all seem to have like a, a split here, which I'm, I'm liking quite a bit. This is a good example. I might even copy these guys, put them up in our reference board that we're looking at here. Um, but yeah, I want to make them their own thing because right now they're all attached. If I double click this, uh, everything is one. These are obviously welded together. So we're gonna have to revisit these guys and uh, give them a little bit more love. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm gonna start by um, selecting all of these faces, which are pretty much all the faces of the foot. Yeah, we're getting some weird shapes as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and shift right click, extract these faces uh, and let's isolate this and focus on cleaning it up a bit. We have some weird edge flow here, uh, not ideal. We have this long edge on top of the short edge. So to clean that up, I'm going to add a cut along the long edge. Place it there and place another cut here. This is another long edge um, that's not quite matched up. So I'm going to snap this here. And then I'm also going to snap this here. And if we merge combine, Everything is going to be proper and flowing correctly. 
This guy is another example of something that needs to be fixed. It's just sort of geo floating. So if I delete that, I can snap this guy back here. And trace a little cutout for this guy to snap to. Something like so. So I can go ahead and yeah, delete this face that's hiding behind here. This face. There's another face we don't really want, I believe. Hmm. All this geometry seems to be a little bit improper. So I'm going to delete all of that and we can work on repairing it. I do remember that part not being perfectly done at the start. So let's go ahead and just sort of weld these guys back. Just vertex snapping. We can merge vertices and then sort of close that off there. So this is all fine, fine and dandy. The issue now is this giant hole in the front. <laughs> um, could have a few problems with that. So let's go ahead and start fixing that. Um, I'm gonna start by grabbing this whole edge and extruding it. And I'm gonna snap this to where it needs to be. The issue is, is we have a lot of these verts that aren't connecting to anything. So we're gonna have to close them off by snapping them to the nearest sort of endpoint where it has something to clip onto. Um, up here, I'll add an edge, close it off. In this way, everything will have something to snap to. Can merge those guys. And that would just leave this part to extrude up. And I do believe, oh, it seems like that's connected all properly. If I move this vert, no, this is a very long edge. Yeah, let me add a vert here. We can snap it up here. In this way, snap that there. We just don't want any random verts floating on edges. Like everything needs to be merged to something. Um, even with this, we can take the cleanup a little bit further. This whole area, <laughs> we're gonna have to spend quite a bit of time on uh, when we're cleaning that up for the low poly. But for now, that cleanup takes care of that. I do wanna check if these are all properly in place. And it seems they are not. They're just sort of floating on this face. So we're gonna have to make some cuts here. Cut here, cut here, cut, cut. Cut and close it off here. Delete this face. We need to make sure we have it welded down properly. Definitely something we should have uh, taken care of at the start. But regardless, we're here now, so we might as well fix it. Go ahead and merge those guys. Okay, and that should do it for this whole front one. Um, which means we can go back to this foot piece. Uh, for this guy, I'm gonna to wanna to fill the top. Um, additionally, it seems like it has like a rubber 
coating near the bottom. And even if we go and look at this, it's definitely rubber. So let's mimic that just by going to bevel this to make it a little bit rounder. And then maybe extrude this out with a control E. Just to add a little bit of thickness, maybe a 0.15. I want it to be noticeable, but not that much. Make sure this outside ring is level at the bottom. You can delete this. Flatten this guy out. I might even pull the inside up a little bit so it's more of that tapered look that we're uh, <laughs> that we originally had. Um, but this seems a lot rounder, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up, scale it out, bevel it nice, which means we can pull this guy down. I might even shrink this in a little bit. Pull this up so it's a bit tighter. And then um, detach the bottom piece so it's its own separate material. Um, just so we can keep it all different. I'm gonna hit shift period to grow selection. Interesting, sometimes it doesn't work and I've never quite figured out why. So I guess we'll do it the old fashioned way by selecting and then Selecting this ring, shift right click, extract. We'll clean these guys up by filling this hole and this one as well. Okay, those feet are looking definitely a lot more defined than the other ones. Uh, let's go ahead and add that screw in the bottom. So let's quickly see the size of it. Kind of what you'd expect. Um, just click a face so I can quickly spawn a cylinder. 16 sides should be fine. Snapping that to the middle. And let's isolate these two guys. Just got to get the size right. I'm not going to put it in there too much. But it also seems like it's um, tapered in and then extrudes in. So I'm going to grab this, this face on the top, and scale it in. And then add a cut and scale it out. So it's straight and then taper, kind of like what we have uh, here. Actually, what we have there is the exact <laughs> opposite. We have it straight at a certain point, but then the outside is tapering into it. It's more like this, right? Starting off wide and then goes straight. That's kind of the look we're going for. Okay, go ahead and do our boolean for this guy. So I'm just gonna freeze transform delete history, get our DC bool manager, select our main mesh and then shift select our boolean mesh, new boolean operation, clean up, delete history and base objects. I might even go ahead and, huh, yeah, none of these line up uh, at all. Yeah, I probably should have just used a Boolean with the same amount of sides and the same orientation. Probably would have made this a lot easier. But for now, I'm just going to snap everything. All 
merge those verts. And pull those out a little bit more. Pull that down a bit. Okay. Go ahead and put a screw on there. Looks like a flat one, like this guy. You could just duplicate one from somewhere else if you'd like. And I feel like this seems a bit big. I feel like it should be more like that sized. So in that case, we can just Shrink this all down. And have something like so. Cool, I'm gonna color code this so I know it's a different material. Give this a bit of a random rotation. And then we're gonna move on to the next foot. Uh, we can now just duplicate these guys around, which is really nice. Um, so we have this and this. Just need to make sure we slice off the bottom and then uh, clean everything up. So let's start with the cleanup so we don't get sort of sidetracked. First, I'm going to extract these faces so they're no longer a part of it. And let's isolate this, see where we can clean things up. So yeah, this is not proper, very similar to the other side where we're gonna have to add a cut like so, where we can attach this edge instead of having it just floating. Merge vertices and just give that a quick test. Seems to be working fine. Um, we do have to clean up these front faces, how they're just sort of, you know, here and this thing is floating on top of it. So we're going to have to delete those. Delete that as well. To start, I'm going to merge this guy up. So we just have one less extrusion and just do a little basic cleanup. Just merge all that. This is pretty much the exact same as what we were doing on the other side. I can now grab these two edges, three edges, and extrude. Just snap this here. Let's do some cleanup where I snap that down. And then we have a long edge with a vertice resting on it, which means we're going to have to give it a place to snap to. Going to add a cut there. Snap that new vertice to the one on top. Merge that. And then we can just sort of extrude this and snap it over, making sure to clean this up where we can. Just gonna double check I did that on this side. Yep. Okay, so that's all good. Now we just gotta cut this stuff out um duplicate the feet over and the front should be done so let's go ahead and do just that okay out of those cuts so we can Delete that face underneath. And just like before, snap that all the way around. Merge it once again. Uh, let's go ahead and duplicate the foot over. Grab all three of those pieces. 
I'm just going to snap it to the oh, freeze transform suite history and then snap it over to this foot. I guess it's not having any of that. Let's center the pivot and do it one at a time. So one, two, three, and that should be lined up properly. And that's two of the feet. Um, the back ones, I have a hunch they'll be easier. I hope so. <laughs> Let's go ahead and grab this and extract the faces. So let's do a quick test to see if everything's merged properly. Like that's connected. That's connected. I have a feeling this probably isn't. Oh, it is. Is this all? It's all properly connected. Nice. Okay, so I guess the back will be quite a bit easier. Um, Okay, well, if, if there's no cleanup, we can just duplicate the foot over and uh, it should be pretty smooth. Duplicate, snap, duplicate, snap, and duplicate, snap. Let's go ahead and delete this foot. I gotta give these guys some random rotations as well. And then the bottom one, or the back one, should be the same in theory, hopefully. Let's extract this guy, do some uh, inspecting. Oh. Uh, it seems at the top of the... Okay, that's not good. It seems that the top of that foot had uh, faces on it. I'm gonna try and see if I can just select them and delete them, but for some reason they're merged, which is very bizarre. Can I just delete that and it's fine? How was that merged then? Very weird. I feel like just going back and cleaning this stuff up, there's probably parts in the recording from like a, like 30 parts ago where people, if they were watching it, probably noticed like a mistake like this and were like, oh my God, how did he miss that? Um, I mean, we are getting to it now, but true. That's kind of a, a weird one to, to overlook. Okay. Nice. Got the feet on there. Looking good. Um, so that's part five done. Part six, like I said, is probably the one that's going to take the longest, but uh, the feet took longer than I thought. So this will probably take just as long, if not shorter, actually. Uh, and then the rest of these are, are relatively quick and simple ones. Uh, and then the bottom row is it, and then we're done. So let's let's get through all of these in this part. We'll breeze through them. This guy, um, the 3D model online had different views of it, but it kind of seems like something that ticks through the um, sort of gear pieces we made here. And it's kind of attached right here. Um, it kind of seems like it wants to have a little bit more room. So what I'm going to do is take these pieces and just push them back a wee bit. Uh, and we'll go ahead and make this guy. So it's like a little square piece, has these bridge connections, goes up and has a little clamp on there. Let's do some further inspecting 
So we get a nice 3D view of it. The lighting is very dark. Um, but yeah, it's kind of just like these pieces that bridge over this little small square. They go up and they lodge into the spiked components. Um, bolted down, and then there's a little release at the back. So, pretty simple. Another new piece to add, another new mechanical contraption. Uh, let's add in a cube. And this one I think I am actually going to weld onto this. Because it does seem... It does seem like it would it would have to be attached that way. I can't imagine it would be screwed in from the bottom or something. Um, regardless, let's go ahead and delete the bottom face. Let's move our pivot to the bottom of this guy, snap it down. Let's center the pivot. Give it some length, thin it out a bit. Just looking at this reference, you can see the box from like, like peeking over this line. So it's gonna have to be, I guess, yay tall. Which makes me wanna make it a little bit longer. I want to center this, so I'm going to poke face. And I can slide it a bit closer. Okay, so that's the box. Um, now we got to work on those little legs that are going around. So let's start by getting the legs that are stretching to it, like these guys here. Let's make sure we're mimicking the angle and the height of it. Um, to do that, let's just start by duplicating this cube. We're going to fill in the bottom, so select that loop and fill hole. Can shrink this guy down. Let's just start with the shape before we angle it. So. It's kind of long, kind of like this. Um, then if I go to my cut tool, I can cut like so. And then sort of extrude it this way. Maybe make this a little bit larger. And then it just kind of seems like this is beveled. That's about it. In that case, I feel like it's thinner. Kind of like so, but this seems to be pulled up. This can just be snapped here for convenience. Same with this. Converge those verts, and we can shrink this guy like so to taper it. Might want to make it thinner so it actually fits in between these guys. Um, let's just double this with our real life reference. Yeah, they're very thin, dainty looking pieces. Um, just to make sure we can get this accurate, I'm going to move my pivot to the back here. And rotate. So there's one that's close and one that's far. So 
the depth is a little bit off, eh? I suppose we could grab all of these components and pull them back a little bit. And then with this, since it's just the end of the, the bar, we can pull that back. So now it's closer. It's still not perfect though. We can also pull this guy out. And it's getting there. I guess all we really have to do is just something like that. Yeah, and I guess that works. Straight, long, very thin. Okay. It does look a little bit odd. I do want to make this taller so I can make this shorter. I just don't like how lanky the pieces are. And then I might even opt to have this lower and kind of like branch into one of these. Rotate it super subtly. Okay, pull this closer to the end. The next one might look a little weird because it's going to be longer. Maybe something like that. All I did was I have my move tool set to object. And that's how it's scaling out uh, that way. Uh, but that means that these guys are all different sizes now. I'm grab these verts and smush them. Pull them in. Okay, so that's mimicking that pretty well. Sort of have to find a way to attach them now, which should be uh, pretty straightforward. Um, I like how they do it here, where it just sort of extrudes out and then connects on both sides. It would also make these look a little bit shorter. Just trying to think if there's any way to make this look a little bit more natural. All the real life reference we have is a little, uh, Hard to see exactly what's going on. It also seems like this is a bit closer in the other ones. As if this piece is closer to the edge, which I guess we can get away with. Um, We went for something like that, and then something like so. I guess I'm going to have to rotate this one as well. I can bring that guy in a bit.
and let's work on the uh, connection pieces for these guys now. So I'm actually just going to um, combine them and I'm going to do that so that I can cut them at the same spot. So going to control shift X for our cut tool, just kind of slice them like so. Maybe slice them twice actually. Once there, and then once right about there. This way I can snip off the bottom and sort of have a cut to extrude from on each side. So let's go ahead and fill these holes. Control E to extrude. Uh, it seems like it's not perfect. So I'm going to do it this way where I just drag out and then I'm going to let that be. This I'm also going to just drag out. I'm going to have to scale it down to make it even though. I'm just kind of eyeball it. Because, yeah, these aren't even, right? Maybe I should just snap that there and snap this so it's even. In that case, I can pull this out a bit more. Same with that one. Let's go ahead and extrude these guys out. Pull them down. All right, it seems like this guy's a little off. I might have him just hanging off the edge, to be honest. I could do something like, like so. Seems like it would be fine. This end piece being so angular is a little bit weird. If I were to bevel it, I could bring it up like that and have it be a bit more flush. So I'm going to do it. Bevel, bring it up. I'm going to merge all of that. And then um, I want to see what it looks like if I extrude this back. Yeah, I'm going to do that on both of these, just so they have a bit more room. They seem very dainty and fragile. So pulling them back a bit. And then just scaling it down. Okay, pulling that guy up a bit. I'm going to search for a bit more of a tighter reference as to what the tip of these look like. Um, some sort of rounded shape, but it's very, very hard to see exactly. It just kind of, it might just be that, just a, a simple rounded shape. This is a better view of the bolts. Just confirmation that they are there. Yeah, once again, just very, very hard to see what the tips look like. Huh, maybe we'll just stick with what we have. 
It almost looks like some of them though have um as if there's a cut here and then they're raised a bit. We'll get rid of those for now. Let's do some cleanup on this and then we'll we'll round the bottoms and add a bolt to it. So everything kind of has like a second edge to it, which we definitely don't want. It's just overcomplicating things. So I'm just gonna snap where I can. It's definitely one of the more tricky pieces just because of the, the whole lack of reference on everything. Um, okay, I'm just going to merge that. I'll have to do the same in the front. Okay, is that it? I think so. So let's focus on rounding these guys out. Just gonna grab these edges and then if we bevel it, it should be good minus this side. It'll cause some issues because of this edge. Um, but we'll clean that up after we make sure everything's beveled uniformly. Take off isolation to see how that looks. I feel like that'll look pretty good with a screw there. I want it to be a little bit more boxy. Okay. So let's go ahead and isolate those again. Just to clean this up. Yeah, it kind of looks like that. Um, for now, I'm just going to delete the edges. They probably won't jive too well with the uh, the boolean. Okay, so those are gone. Yeah, minus these guys. There we go. Since there's so much space here, I might even do something like this, where I have um, like some extra support, just to fill up the space a bit more, so it, so it makes more sense. And then, yeah, we will be welding that on. Um, but let's attach everything first. Some of these angles just look a kind of a bit silly, in my opinion, though. Like, from here, it's fine. I kind of like the detail. Maybe it's just because it's so thin. Maybe if I take these and pull them back, it'll be fine. I guess I have to grab these as well. Yeah, I suppose the thickness helps a bit with the believability, but 
still doesn't seem like the main concern to me. I think that's more the design. Uh, I am going to snap these forward, though. And I'll worth the extra geo. Merge that. Maybe it's one of those things that'll look better when it's textured. It just looks like way too basic as a design right now. Um, yeah, it just makes me wondering. Like, like that, it looks just like that. I guess it has these sort of flaps on the side. Not quite sure what that's all about. I think it's just because they're so straight, and this kind of adds like a, a curve or a wobble to it. Like if we were to slice through it. Even just adding a bend, I already like it more. So let's try taking this cut. And we'll do it <laughs> from the side view so it's actually proper. I'm holding shift so we get a nice crisp angle. Let's do it like here. Um, let's go ahead and bevel it. Add a segment. And then say like, Hmm. Close. Let's undo that cut. Let's put the cut in the middle. Select the edges. Bevel them. Add an extra segment in there. Maybe something like that. I added another bevel to it. I just want it to look intentional. If I bring it in pretty sharp and then bevel that. I like that kind of divot. And then I grab these guys and bevel these. A very small fraction. Bevel these. Let's see what it looks like with wireframe off. I mean, it looks intentional. And if we want to get rid of it, it's just a matter of deleting some edge loops. I just think having it being very straight looked kind of goofy. Hmm. I'm going to undo all that. Let's put our wireframe back on too. Yeah. Just keep it accurate to how it is. I think I might just add like a little tab to it to the end and that should be enough. So maybe add a cut here, add a cut here, and then like extrude it to have a little 
ticking tab to look up 0.125. Just to kind of add to the shape a little bit. And maybe actually make it a lot smaller, like 0 0.75. Sorry, 0 0.075. Just so we can bake it down without any issues later. 0 0.05 slight flex might be okay and then bevel that I'm gonna stick with that we don't have much of a design to go with Maybe a more subtle flex. Yeah, our reference doesn't really give us a lot to go off of, so I'll just stick with that for now. And we'll focus on adding detail to the places that we do know. For example, adding the bolts here. So let's go ahead with that. Because um, it's just one of those cases where like, there's there's not too much we can really work with here. Um, and because of so, there's no point dwelling on these little things that people probably won't even notice anyways. What we can do is uh, add these bolts in because we know for a fact that this design has them. I'm going to stick this guy right through. Size might be a little bit extreme. It's rather small actually. And then we can poke face. Know where to center this. Alrighty, let's go ahead and uh, combine these guys. Do a freeze transforms lead history boolean. New Boolean operation, clean up, delete history and base objects. Nice. Borrow one of these. And let's just isolate these guys for now. Snap it horizontally, snap it vertically, put it in here, scale it up, random rotation, rotation, It's also cool to sort of mess with the depths a little bit, like have some further out. Should do that here as well. Um, all right, so that'll be that guy, I guess. Yeah, that'll do it for, for how we sort of put this together. I guess I'm not the happiest with it, but it is what it is. Um, I'll keep it red for now. We'll see how it is when we make the high poly. We can always revisit it. It's not a very complex piece. This guy though, I do want to properly attach to the bottom. Sort of extrude that across. Merge vertices. And we can sort of do a manual 
sort of attachment here by just cutting some shapes. Add a cut here, here, here because there's an edge, here for this edge, right here, here. Like so. Actually, it should be more like that. And then, yeah, delete those faces. Snap all of this together. Before we merge everything, I'll clean this guy up as well. Okay, I think all these get deleted. Cool, and then, yep, we can just sort of combine these two guys. Mesh combine, merge vertices. I guess we shouldn't have <laughs> cut around these guys. We probably should have optimized it first. I just snap those, um, converge that. This kind of looks a little weird hanging out, so and we also have this long edge. So we're gonna have to close this off here. We'll merge that. Same here, I'm guessing there's a long edge. Or maybe not. Either way, I want to um, Give this kind of like a sharp cutoff. Merge those verts. Then we can even raise it higher so it's more obvious. It doesn't look like it's hanging off as much. And then I also like the idea of beveling these. But I guess it doesn't like the idea of it because there's triangles going to it. Oh, what's happening here? Oh. Yeah, that could be an issue. Let's merge that and try again. Control B to bevel. Something like so. And then just isolate it to do a little cleanup. And now we got that piece on there. I think it might just be that it's hanging so far to the, the other side. Like if I pulled this all over I'd imagine I wouldn't have as much of a problem with it. Yeah, like already I like that more. Um, and the fact that these are so long. I think it's just the proportions of everything like that it seems too big. But I also want it to be closer. Okay, I'm happier with that. 
And the red is totally not the right color for this. The, the bolts are blending in. So I'll make it yellow. Because yellow is the color of things that are way too complicated. Everything that's yellow in here is like more of the, the least liked pieces. Uh, either way, those guys are now done. Which now takes us to... Um, revisiting this. There is actually a piece we are missing uh, for this guy. And that's kind of like a little release clip that hangs up from here. So let's quickly throw that guy on there. It literally takes two seconds. Um, but I also want to pull these verts forward. Okay, so for the release clip, I'm going to create polygon primitives cube. D to move the pivot, snap it here, just sort of have it on the side. Um, like so, pull it in. And round it out. Just looking at the 3D model, it kind of has um, this guy on the end here. So I'm just going to take this guy down to about here. No, actually, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Pull this down. Maybe rotate it a little bit. We'll have this hanging on the edge. And bevel the ends and then just like bolt it in with a basic cylinder and then it should be good to go. Kind of like a rounded little flare sticking out. Go ahead and boolean. Just going to duplicate this guy so we can have him for later. Go ahead and boolean that. Clean up delete history and base objects. Sorry, delete history. I 
think I clicked the wrong thing there. Anyways, we should be able to stick this guy in here. It should get the job done. If I color coat these guys, should be fine. I'm going to bevel this so it's like more of a button that it's sticking into. Uh, we should be good. I'm going to pull it out. Now we have this little nub. Turn off wireframe. Oh man. I think I pressed delete. Or I didn't delete the uh, boolean properly. That's why that was there. Okay, we got the little extra attachment. Looking very nice. Kind of makes me want to um, grab these two and pull this back a little bit closer so I expose more of the end like it is here. Wiggle these guys into place. Okay, so that should do that. Okay, we'll leave those how they are for now. Um, right, so we are supposed to revisit this. Um, I don't think there's too much we really have to add. There's a different back to it because like ours is super basic. I just saw this and how there was like a rope and multiple layers to it. And I thought maybe there were some, some additional stuff we could do to it. Uh, but I am thinking that maybe we should call it a part here. We have been recording for, yep, over an hour. So let's call it a part here. We got the legs done. Um, we added this piece. Um, and was there something else we did? No, that seems to be just about it, but those were the two longer ones anyway. So I'll look into this a little bit more. Maybe there's something I'll change uh, about it for the next part. But regardless, uh, thank you guys for watching. And the next part, I'm super confident we'll be able to get all of these guys done for sure. And that just leaves kind of the back and, and this additional keyboard component. Um, and that'll wrap everything up. Yep, just a few more parts. Um, for me recording this right now, it's a Saturday. I have the Monday off, so I'm hoping to get all this done over the weekend. Uh, but yeah, for you guys, you should uh, be able to see how many parts there are left already. Either way, hoping to get this done super, super soon. Don't want to sort of keep you guys here longer than you, uh, you have to be. So uh, with that being said, thank you guys for watching this part. I'll do some investigation here, and uh, I will catch you in the next chapter. See you guys.